New images just dropped. The jets are still here stronger and pointing in more directions than before. Seven distinct streams of material, each one collimated like a laser beam, each one stretching millions of kilometers through empty space, some pointing toward our star, some pointing away, all of them defying what we thought we knew about how objects from beyond our solar system behave. This is 3i Atlas, an interstellar visitor that passed closest to our star on November 8th, 2025. And something changed, something fundamental. Before perihelion, astronomers saw a small glowing cloud. After perihelion, they saw structure, multiple jets, organized, directional, as if the object woke up. What would you do if you were the first person to see this? A equals fragmentation, B equals single object, C equals unknown mechanism, comment now. If you want me to keep tracking this mystery and report every update, hit like. Let me take you to the moment everything shifted. July 2025. The Hubble Space Telescope captured an interstellar object passing through our cosmic neighborhood. Scientists cataloged it as 3i Atlas, the third confirmed visitor from beyond our planetary system. The images showed a diffuse cloud, faint, unremarkable, standard comet behavior, they thought. Log it, track it, move on. But they kept watching because interstellar objects are rare. In all of human history, we've confirmed only three. Oumuamua in 2017, Borisov in 2019, and now 3i Atlas. Three visitors out of trillions drifting through the galaxy. And every one of them has surprised us. Fast forward to November. 3i Atlas reaches perihelion, the closest point in its orbit to our star. Before perihelion, diffuse coma, after perihelion, directional structure. New telescopes lock on to the object. Higher resolution, better instruments. And what they capture changes everything. The small cloud is gone. In its place, seven collimated jets shooting outward in multiple directions. Not random plumes. Not diffuse clouds. Structured beams of gas and dust, each one maintained over distances that dwarf anything we've seen from comets born in our own system. One jet extends one million kilometers toward our star. Another stretches three million kilometers in the opposite direction, seven times the distance from Earth to the moon. And they're not spreading out, they're not diffusing into space. They remain focused, collimated, like something is channeling them. Comment what you think is happening, even one word. Here's what we know for certain. Telescopic observations from November 8th through November 11th, 2025. Confirmed at least seven distinct jets emanating from 3i Atlas. Each jet shows clear directionality. Some point toward our star moving against the solar wind, which is itself moving at over one million kilometers per hour. Others point away carried by that same wind. The anti-tail of the jet pointing sunward is particularly puzzling. In standard comet models, the solar wind pushes material away from our star. Always. It's a fundamental pattern we've observed in every comet for centuries. Tails point away. That's the rule. But 3i Atlas has a jet pointing directly into the solar wind. It's like watching smoke drift toward a hurricane instead of away from it. According to current models, this requires an internal mechanism generating thrust powerful enough to overcome solar radiation pressure. Now let's talk numbers. 
Avi Loeb, Harvard astrophysicist and leading researcher on interstellar objects, analyzed the brightness and size of these jets. His calculations suggest 3 I Atlas is losing approximately 50 billion tons of material per month. 50 billion tons. To put that in perspective, Mount Everest weighs roughly 300 trillion tons. So imagine vaporizing one-sixth of Everest every single month. That's the scale we're talking about. But here's where the math gets uncomfortable. Based on the object's estimated size, roughly 1.6 kilometers in diameter, the total mass is approximately 33 billion tons. The object appears to be losing 50 billion tons per month. But according to our measurements, it only weighs 33 billion tons total. The math doesn't add up. One hypothesis, the object fragmented. If 3i Atlas broke into multiple pieces during or after perihelion, the combined mass of all fragments could easily exceed 33 billion tons. Each fragment contributes its own outgassing. More surface area exposed to solar heating. More mass loss. Problem solved. Except we haven't confirmed fragmentation. No telescope has resolved 3i Atlas into separate pieces. The jets appear to originate from a single source region. If fragmentation occurred, where is the debris? Why don't we see distinct objects? It's possible the fragments are too small or too close together to resolve at this distance. Or maybe fragmentation hasn't happened yet. Or maybe something else is going on. Something we don't have a model for. A equals fragmented object. B equals still one solid body. C equals unknown mechanism. Comment A, B, or C. No wrong answers. Pause. Let's reset. Three impossible things are happening at once. Let's examine what doesn't fit current comet model. First, the jet structure itself. Standard comets produce plumes when ice sublimates and gas escapes through vents or cracks in the nucleus. These plumes typically disperse within thousands of kilometers. The gas molecules collide, scatter, and spread out into a diffuse cloud. But 3i Atlas maintains collimated jets over millions of kilometers. For a jet to remain focused over that distance requires either extremely low gas density, which contradicts the observed brightness, or some mechanism actively collimating the flow. There's no current model explaining what that mechanism could be. Second, the timing. 3i Atlas showed minimal activity before perihelion. Hubble's July images captured a small, faint cloud. Then it passed closest to our star in early November. And suddenly, seven distinct jets. This suggests perihelion triggered something. But what? In standard models, solar heating increases gradually as the object approaches our star and decreases gradually as it moves away. Sudden structural changes typically accompany fragmentation or outbursts, but neither was detected. No brightness spike. No debris cloud, just structured jets that appeared between observations. Third, the mass loss paradox. Even if we assume fragmentation, the energy budget is problematic. To eject 50 billion tons of material per month requires enormous energy input. That energy comes from solar radiation heating the surface and causing ice to sublimate. But 3i Atlas is relatively far from our star beyond the orbit of Mars. At that distance, solar heating is significantly weaker than it is in the inner solar system. According to thermodynamic calculations for ice rock bodies at this distance, the expected mass loss rate should be orders of magnitude lower than what we're observing. So either 3i Atlas has an unusually high ice content making it exceptionally volatile, or there's an additional energy source we haven't identified. Some researchers have proposed internal heat 
from radioactive decay. Others suggest tidal stresses from gravitational interactions during perihelion. Both remain hypotheses. Neither has been confirmed. Fourth, the orbital geometry. Three, I Atlas moves on a retrograde orbit opposite to the direction planets orbit our star. And that orbit lies almost exactly on the ecliptic plane, where all the planets orbit. The probability of an interstellar object arriving on a retrograde ecliptic orbit? Approximately 0.2%. One in 500? Not impossible, but improbable enough to raise questions. Does this change how you see our place in the universe? Think about what 3i Atlas represents. This object formed around another star, was ejected by gravitational interactions, and drifted through interstellar space for millions of years before intersecting our solar system. And we happen to be watching. We built telescopes capable of seeing it. We developed models to understand it. We asked questions. And 3i Atlas answered with structure we didn't expect. Jets we can't fully explain. Mass loss that doesn't match our calculations. Maybe our models are incomplete. Maybe comets from other stellar systems don't follow the same patterns as comets born here. Or maybe we're missing something fundamental, some process we haven't discovered yet. Write one sentence. This means, right now, observatories around the world are monitoring 3i Atlas. The James Webb Space Telescope may soon point its infrared instruments toward the object. Webb can detect heat signatures invisible to optical telescopes. If there are fragments, Webb might resolve them. If there's an internal heat source generating energy beyond solar heating, Webb could detect its thermal signature. Spectroscopic observations are ongoing. Scientists are analyzing the chemical composition of the jets. Is this water ice, like most comets from our solar system? Or something else? Methane, ammonia, exotic ices that only form in the coldest regions of space? The answers will come in weeks or months. But 3i Atlas won't wait. It's already moving away from our star, back toward the outer solar system. In a few years, it will be too faint to observe with current instruments and then it will leave, back into interstellar space, back into the dark between stars, and we may never see it again. So these observations, these images from November 2025, might be our only chance to understand what 3i Atlas is, our only window into how objects from beyond our system behave, and we're still trying to interpret what we're seeing. Still debating fragmentation versus single body. Still calculating mass loss that exceeds estimated mass. Still wondering why the jets are so structured, so collimated. So unlike anything we've seen before, some questions won't be answered before the object fades from view. And that's okay, because science isn't about having all the answers. It's about asking better questions. 3i Atlas has given us new questions. Questions about jet collimation mechanisms. Questions about mass loss in interstellar objects. Questions about orbital dynamics and arrival probabilities. Questions about whether our models built entirely on objects from our own solar system apply universally, or whether they're local, limited, incomplete. Maybe 3i Atlas isn't an anomaly. Maybe it's normal for interstellar objects. And maybe we've just been observing our own solar system for so long that we mistook local patterns for universal laws. We've spent centuries building physics, testing theories, refining models, and we've become confident, maybe too confident, that we understand how the universe works. Then, an object from interstellar space arrives, an object that spent millions of years beyond our reach, 
forged in conditions we can only guess at. And it behaves differently. Not wrong, just different. The universe is under no obligation to make sense to us. It doesn't care about our equations. It exists, we observe, and sometimes what we observe doesn't fit. That's not failure, that's discovery. Maybe the universe is far stranger than we imagined. Maybe what we call unexplained behavior is just behavior we haven't learned to recognize yet. Maybe the cosmos has been sending us messages for billions of years, objects from distant stars passing through our system, carrying information about how ice forms in other stellar environments, how planetary systems evolve, how ejection mechanisms work, and we're only just now learning to read those messages. Three, I Atlas is one message, one data point, one visitor from the vast dark between stars, teaching us that we have more to learn than we thought. Maybe the universe isn't silent. Maybe we just never listen. What if we're finally ready? So tell me, what do you think happens next?